I will echo the sentiment by saying I was born and raised in L.A. Mm -hmm. And um, what's crazy about this whole George Floyd situation is that we could all say that we've accomplished a lot, sold this, been in this movie, this project, toured, you know, executives, this label, that. But there's this overwhelming feeling, uh, feeling of, of the actual metaphor that we've gotten what we've gotten and we've accomplished what we've gotten, accomplished with the white man's knee on our neck the entire time. Hmm. And in LA, when it comes to quote unquote better education, it's all private schools. Yeah. And when you go to the private schools, you might see three black kids on the entire campus. Mm -hmm. And to understand, even in 2019-2020, that's the uh, systemic, that's the right word, <laughs> uh, racism, is it's all there, and it's all in plain sight. When you come to Atlanta, and you see Black dentists, and surgeons, and political figures, the city of Atlanta has had a Black mayor over 40 years. Um, you come here as a Black man, uh, and you're just like, you're just trying to wrap your head around the idea that this is actually normal because LA is specifically owned, ran and operated by Jewish people. And they are unapologetic about keeping all the energy and money in the family. And then you, you either can get mad at it or you can go to Atlanta <laughs> where that exact same blueprint and thinking and mentality is here. And so Literally, I hope this don't bleed out in the public, but as like right now, I'm literally going back and forth with the lawyers. It's pro I'm already probably $150,000 into going back and forth, trying to get my daughter to go to a school that has 51% diversity because the first mm -hmm. two schools that she went to were all white. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how many, how, many fr how many friends go to your school, Shayla? And she'll go, Let's see, um, such and such and such and such. And I said, the fact that you can bring out your hand and try and count on your fingers, how many black kids you got at your school is a part of the problem. So ultimately they have normalized the lack of diversity. They have normalized whitewashing everything and not including us. And then when we are included, they don't have the energy that we have. When you go to these, I, these private schools- Go ahead, Killer, because I think you're about I, to say what I'm thinking. I'm gonna close it up. Hmm. I, when you I'm, go to these private schools, and you see black people that actually work there, they not us. They're like, hey, what's going on? Me and my friends are like so cool. And they give you the whole <laughs> shit. And you say to yourself, okay, now I know why you work at the school. Because right. you see black people here, but you ain't quite <laughs> what, you know, no, you know, but you, you, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> we get it. I totally like, get it. Kill. Did you want to say so? No, nah, I, I, I just want to, I just, it just made me think of a father, I think, deserves some salutes and salutations to fathers in particular who raise their children in, in very white environments. But regardless of who these people choose to mate with, they, 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 they were a credit to their race. And that's Earl Woods and Richard Williams. Like, Tiger's father and the Williams sister's father did a hell of a job keeping their children for as long as they could, black and black, black, black. And we have to remember when we send our children, like if your children go to, go to international school, majority white public school, just go on and make sure they get to see Farrakhan two, three times a year. That's just all. go ahead, yep. just, just go ahead and make sure that y'all yep. get home on the weekends, <laughs> y'all have to watch Dr. Amos Wilson together. You know, I'm fighting, I, I wanted Michael to go to Padilla, my 13 year old, because they're a diverse school, they have, she's only been to black schools, much like me her entire life. And she literally out argued me, her mother, and went to her grandfather. Duke Dust mm. went above there and said, Granddad, I just don't think if I'm already getting good grades, making the principal's list and doing successful, and my circle of friends were all black, I should be forced to go outside that. He said, I'm just, you gotta talk to my father. And my dad had to sit down with me like, hey man, bruh, you can pay the, you know, the, the, the such and such thousand a year, but if she's comfortable with her own, why would you break that? And that's just the mm. truth. Like we, we have to that make beat. it, you, your child should discover Dr. Amos okay. Wilson at 18 when they go to Spelman or Morehouse. We have to make it a habit. You know, I, I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting and I'm making sure that I don't care what school my Jewish friends go to, 
they had to go to school on Saturdays to learn what it was to be Jewish. I don't care mm -hmm. what, what my Muslim friends did, they had to on Fridays go to the mosque to be reminded that they're Muslims. And black people are going to have to do that as a culture. We should be learning Swahili. As a culture, just as a culture of black people, as black men, we should all at least say jumbo to each other and start to figure out three, four different words because what we have to realize is we're not the end. We, we often look at ourselves as Moses coming out of the wilderness. We're not. We're going into the wilderness. We the ones that got to die off. We the ones that 40 years going to be all our old and bad habits are going to leave, but we got to raise strong, proud children. So go to education. Get your education. You might be educated with some people who don't look like you, but when you get home, this is our education. Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, Eldridge yep. Cleaver. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Asada Shakur. We have, to, we have mm -hmm. to do that, and if we don't do that, then we're giving our children to the greater community and allowing mm -hmm. them to believe oh, believe that yeah. somehow the greater community certifies them. It's and that's just not and, the and, 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 and then that's the thing that makes them say stuff like, let me be and let me get and let me yeah. win. Like, yeah, right. like that, those are the things that we like. I, I can't have out of my kids. It's like, it's your... Yeah. It's your responsibility. It's on you. Absolutely. It's within your power. Absolutely. No one can do that. And I think to to even speak on the the communities thing, it's like what what other communities figured out was find a base, and you can yeah. grow from that base. We've always learned that when we get something, take it somewhere so we can stand in front of people who already had it and say we got it now. And in Atlanta, it's like like Mike says, we tend to live beyond our under our means. Yeah. Like when we know, like once we've been taught, oh. Get a hundred thousand dollar house if you only make five hundred thousand dollars. Like don't 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 keep going to look like it. Like yeah. looking like it records got a lot of us fucked up. Yeah, mm. yeah. I drive my, on, my wife. My wife. Yeah, I went. My wife. I went crazy. Greg Street drove a, a Ford F two fifty. Not a cheap truck. Not a cheap truck by any means. My wife paid for mm -hmm. it cash. She told me yeah, it is a no no. But you would have thought a nigga had a Rolls Royce because you know oh, what. Man. I've never wanted a Rolls Royce. I'm a country mm. boy. All, <laughs> I wanted trucks and muscle cars. You so right, I know what makes me happy. I'm not against anything else, but I came into this shit knowing what makes me happy. You happy, and, yeah. And, 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 mm -hmm. and I tell people about Atlanta and black male them, <laughs> without a black male mayor of black Atlanta named John Wesley Dobbs, the unofficial black mayor, you never get the real black mayor that was his grandson, Maynard Jackson. You never get the audacious black mayor that was that was Bill Campbell, and later you never get a Kasim Reed who put the Tyler Perry deal together. The difference mm -hmm. in having a black political class is if we keep the black political class, the economic class here, we'll have three Tyler Perrys and not just one, and it won't right. be a novelty. I remember when everybody was clamoring, saying, "Oh my God, Tyler Perry has his own exit. He has his own he has his own um, studio." They didn't even realize the highway that you drove on was named for a black man. Mm -hmm. Arthur Langford Highway was, but he was black. But so this whole city encourages black success, black family, black maledom. And it's not just Atlanta. It happens in Birmingham, happens in Tallahassee, happens in Chattanooga. Houston. But, I, but I, Houston, but I honestly feel that we have been the best prototype and we can still be a hundred times better. And I think mm -hmm. that if we do that, and even in the enclaves that we are in LA and New York and other places, that we can be a stronger community, but as a community, we got to decide what's enough for us. Because we, yes, I can't sir. catch up with white folk. Every white boy I know who got money like me, grandparents got triple the money my grandparents ever had. So yeah. my thing is, I'm going to mm. know what mm. makes me happy. I'm going to tell right. my kids that I'm going to love you regardless. But if you win, it's a credit to the race. I need you right. to know that. Every win you yeah. win is an example to another little black kid that can win. So I need you with more wins than losses. You know, there it is. And, we, and we should have that sense of responsibility. I agree with you bringing that. There it is. I, I agree with you 100%, and I'm inspired by that, bringing the real African American experience as far as education and Marcus Garvey and Malcolm and, and all of our kind of go to uh, heroes. Uh, but, you know, I, again, as a father, I've had those moments being in the private school that my, I'm proud that my daughter is in. It's expensive as shit. But you get to <laughs> get where they have the, the 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 king holiday, right? And so you see all these white kids on stage, and they're all getting bits and pieces of "I Have a Dream" speech. And then you look on the stage, and then you look in the audience with all the parents, 
and with this mm-hmm. little black boy and this little black girl and this and everything about Dr. King's speech. And you're like, damn, man, I actually don't see the fruits of what Dr. King's actual speech was about. As I look on this stage and I mm-hmm. look in the audience with all these people, I don't see any of that di- diversity and inclusion and equal opportunity that Dr. King was even speaking about. And so it's, it's, you're absolutely right. I will, I will do way more than I've been doing about putting uh, black history on my kids' radar. Yeah, take them babies down it, to the Apex it, Museum. It, take them babies yeah. to the Auburn Avenue Research Museum. Yeah, it take is. them babies to the King Center. Just make it your thing weekly. Like, hey man, I, 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 love, I love white people's yeah. love of that speech. But, they, but, that, but let's be honest, man, in 50 years, my grandfather used to say the worst thing, and this gonna hit some people hard, he said he would say to my grandmother when they would have political arguments, the worst thing to happen to black people is desegregation. And man, I just did, I didn't get it. Cause I'm wow. like, Randy, what you wow. talking about? We all equal. But he would say to me, y'all think but white folks in water. He said, y'all think white folks ice we, cold. Fellas, we running, we running out of time, fellas. We running out of time, and, man. And, this, right. this all that just so to say, it. who we are is enough. We yeah. smart enough, we good enough, we beautiful Absolutely. enough, we brilliant enough. And we already free. We must act like it. I'm not saying the schools are not good. I'm not saying the jobs are not good. But, man, I want the big three to win. I love the NBA. I love being right, in the win. Right, right. I need the big three to win because I need I, to know that we control our athletics just like we controlled our music for a while, just like right. we controlled our singing and dancing. So I want mm-hmm. us to win. And, and, and you know, before my battery dies, I love y'all. 